Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I'm excited to give you new footage of the two final maps coming out for the Turning Tides DLC. This map I'm playing on right here is called Heligoland Bite, and then there's also the Zebruga Raid map. Both maps feature extensive naval warfare. This is the first time we get to see them textured, so it's a really good indication of what they're gonna finally look like. DICE has confirmed that no major changes will be done to either map between now and when they release sometime this month. The official release date has not been given, but I'd imagine it's gonna be within the next week or two. In addition to the extensive naval warfare, we also have quite a bit of aerial warfare. There isn't like a ton of airplanes on each map, but there is an airship which has its own anti-aircraft cannons um, and can easily take out airplanes attacking it. There's an interesting balance between land, air, and sea. Mostly the balance goes towards the sea, I gotta say, but uh, air is quite a lot of fun. And these maps are bound to be favorites for skilled pilots out there. Now, Heligoland Bight is an interesting map. First of all, it's a very beautiful map. I gotta say the ambiance and lighting and just visuals of this map are very impressive. They've got this really beautiful sort of sand duny island with tall grass on it and then a big rocky island in which the infantry can only go around the perimeter. If you try and get on top of the island, it counts as out of bounds. So you can't jump out of an airplane and snipe from the cliffs down at players below. You can only run down by the coastal area. The coast and everything looks beautiful on these maps. Um, sometimes it sucks getting blown up from a destroyer or a boat way out in the ocean as you're running around as infantry, but it is still something that is just beautiful to behold while you're actually fighting on it. The infantry combat is without question focused around the A, B, and C points as they are the closest to each other and you can actually get to them on foot relatively quickly. The other points around the map seem to be a little bit on the extremities. They're not as fun to go to and generally I found when capping them uh, it went uncontested. I don't actually remember having any sort of firefights on the remaining flag points as they're just too far away and too obscure too hard to get to so we just didn't really engage much over there but i imagine playing on the map a bit more we'll start to see players develop strategies or tactics for defending those points or maybe they really are just too far removed now when it comes to naval warfare both teams have plenty of the smaller ships to spawn in and drive around to get to different points they both come with dual torpedoes which are ideal for taking out some of the bigger ships like destroyers both teams get destroyers and airships also, Dreadnoughts will spawn in on this map. I believe when you're playing on the Conquest Assault variation of this game mode, two Dreadnoughts can spawn in. So you can actually have Dreadnought versus Dreadnought combat, uh, which is absolutely insane. It's cool in concept. Uh, I haven't played enough of it to see how it actually plays out. It sounds a little bit nightmarish, as if one Dreadnought's not bad enough. Two on the same map seems like it could be a bit overkill. Um, as you would expect, destroyers and a lot of the larger vehicles are very powerful, but if you have an organized and competent team, you should be able to take them out. There's enough smaller vessels and anti-aircraft guns on the map that you can really focus them down. Um, destroyers are very powerful. They can take out uh, a single boat on their own quite easily, but when you're going up against a bunch of smaller ships, it becomes quite difficult to deal with them. Now, of course, we have seen the destroyer before on the Cape Hellas map, but uh, that map really didn't give it enough freedom to move around and sort of strut its stuff. Now destroyers, especially on uh, Heligoland Bight, have a lot more freedom and a lot more naval warfare opportunities. So this is the map that I think best uh, encapsulates full out naval and aerial warfare. Again, with a big emphasis on naval. Now, when it comes to the actual combat mechanics of naval warfare, I can't say that it's all that deep. It is a nice change of pace for sure, but I think if uh, Battlefield was building a game around naval combat, then uh, people would be a bit disappointed with just how the naval combat plays out. For the most part, it is point and shoot. And if you're outnumbered, then you're usually dead for the most part. That's kind of how it works because there's not a lot of cover in the ocean. So it's really just whoever can shoot the other person more faster. And if you have two ships versus one ship, usually the two ships will win that firefight. Teamwork and gunning, however, plays a fairly big role in it. If you have a good gunner on your smaller boat, or if you have really good gunners on your destroyer, you can actually get a lot more done. Um, so if you're playing with randoms, you just have to hope that you have great gunners who are very aware of what's going on around you. Or if you're playing with uh, squad mates, perhaps you could all man a destroyer and really lock down a certain part of the island. So I think that's probably where the more 
more interesting or fun gameplay mechanics will come in is with the turret seats and the gunning seats. Those are gonna be probably more important than the actual pilot and driver. Now let's talk about the Zebruga raid map. I did play this one on the white box untextured version before and I have to say as soon as I got onto it I had to sort of squint and say is this textured still? Oh yeah it is textured it's just very dark and kind of monotone. Everything's sort of this dark blue gray uh, color to it. A little bit drab when it comes to the visual spectacle. Nothing quite as impressive as the Heligoland bite map. Um, people might enjoy the nighttime mechanics of it. I've never been a huge fan of nighttime maps, or at least the way they were done in the more recent Battlefield games. I thought Bad Company 2 had some really good nighttime maps where the nighttime effect is brighter and a bit more cartoony. This map here makes it so that the Germans that are so dark with their uniform often blend into the dark, uh, same colored objects in the environment. So it gets really hard to see enemy players. And for the most part, I felt like it was just a spotting shooter. You have to spot the people that you're gonna shoot and the muzzle flash on your weapons gets so bright that it becomes hard if not impossible to track your target sometimes and still maintain accuracy. So I have my issues with nighttime maps and I take that as a big hit against this map. You might not take that as a big hit if you really enjoy nighttime mechanics, but that's just my personal preference. In terms of the map design, it's a very long linear map with objective points along the way. You could compare it to Suez Canal or even go back to Operation Metro if you wanted to. The difference is that on the outskirts of the map, we have this big ocean and naval warfare in which you can take boats to flank around. So you don't just have to push from one direction of the map to the other as infantry, you can take boats and make it a bit more interesting with airships and dreadnoughts and destroyers and all that stuff. So we have naval warfare going on all around the capture points on this map and they can be used to sort of drop off infantry and do uh, massive flanking rats. My opinion's still out on this map. I think I need to play it a bit more before I give my final opinion. My initial impression was that I didn't enjoy it as much as Heligoland Bite. Um, visually speaking, Heligoland seemed a bit cooler to me um, and it had a better integration of naval warfare with the infantry warfare. Here it feels like the naval and aerial warfare is almost separate from the infantry warfare. It's like infantry are doing their own thing on the land part of the map and then the naval and air warfare are sort of doing its own thing and when they can take a quick breather from fighting each other then maybe they'll show you on the map but it's hard to get in there and actually hit the infantry because they have a lot of cover on the interior section of the map so um, it, it does feel separated in that sense and I've never liked battlefield maps that feel like uh, there's just two different things going on where like pilots are fighting each other rarely interacting with infantry and then infantry are fighting each other rarely interacting with pir pilots it feels like there's two different battles going on in the same map and generally speaking I think battlefield maps should try and avoid that sort of feeling and who knows maybe it'll it'll change and evolve in players understanding of this map will get better and they'll figure out better ways to integrate the naval and infantry warfare together but at the moment it just didn't feel quite as interesting now I believe also we were playing with the new time to kill update during this play session it was really hard for me to get a read on it because I was playing on European servers because CTE basically only plays on European servers these days um, and I had 160 ping which makes it very hard to gauge the TTK or the TTK update rather um, and so I don't really want to give my opinion on how the TTK stuff felt but uh, the patch also changed a lot of things going on with guns and stuff this time around. I imagine most of this will be final in the next January patch. So we'll be seeing a huge update to Battlefield 1 in theory and hopefully this January. Long time in the making. It feels like three or four months now, which is kind of crazy. So not only is the January patch going to bring these two new maps to the game, but it's also potentially going to bring one of the most impactful weapon mechanics changes since the launch of Battlefield 1. Decreasing the time to kill for a lot of weapons, balancing out a lot of guns so that they're more in line with the Automatico, making medic rifles more effective at long range, doing virtually nothing to sniper rifles, making machine guns do more damage, changing recoil patterns, so many things are changing with the weapons and TTK patch. Uh, a lot of your favorite guns, you're going to have to sort of get a new feel for. I noticed um, with the BAR while I was using it that the recoil seemed to be quite a bit more intense this time around, as I imagine the recoil and spread mechanics are changing quite a bit. So that's something that I'm not even going to bother delving into until we have uh, basically the final patch is out, the final patch notes, and we can start getting into what guns are now the new kings of Battlefield 1. 
Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching. Check it out on the CTE if you have the time. And I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.